All right, Neil. So we've had a few requests in the comments on this one about mm. insoles. Um, I can see a G8 there in front of you, which uh, I know you've been criticised for promoting in the past, like you're in bed with them, but I've just yes. found out you don't even get a bloody discount on them. <laughs> Vacuum sealed. So no. <laughs> what's going on there? Jeez. I get the they standard. They should be sending you then like millions of those, I reckon. The standard wholesale pricing okay. from David. Look, David's created a pretty awesome product here. It's not on the cheaper end of the spectrum okay. in terms of off-the-shelf insoles. But unfortunately, it is really, really good. Um, and it's highly customizable. So yeah, it, it is a good them. product. Yeah. We'll talk about them and give them, give them a good and bad rep in a minute. Uh, there's not much bad to say about them, really. I've got another example here, which is a, another SIDAS insole, which I'm going to show you. And the one that I'm missing, which I'm going to mention in this video, is the specialized ones, um, which are very, very similar to a lot of off-the-shelf orthotics. So we'll go through those three Is as that where examples. they come in the box and you've got three options? Sorry, yeah. yeah. yeah there's the, uh, the, the red, Shimano the ones have the clip-on, clip-off. Uh, Velcro ones. Yep. Specialized ones come in, I think, three different arch heights, and you might be also referring to the Bont ones, which oh, come with the Bont okay. shoes now, yes, where you right. can actually get three different heights. Um, so, what are you looking for in a good quality cycling insole? Now, this is highly predicated upon the type of foot that you have. So, first things first, have a look at your foot, right? There's a couple of really important things that you need to look out for here. First things first, if your foot is extremely unusual in its proportions, now the, the big one here is the arch height. If you've got an incredibly short, high arched foot with, where the arch is a long way off the ground and it's incredibly rigid, you wanna take note of that. If you've got a really broad forefoot, you wanna take note of that with reference to the orthotic. If your foot is incredibly rigid, so when you put weight on it, if it doesn't splay at all, if it doesn't deform, if it's just like a block of wood and it just hits the ground and just stays in exactly the same shape as you walk. This you want to take note of as well so because this could influence the way that you choose the orthotic. If your feet are highly asymmetrical, this will also influence the way that you choose your orthotic. So if you know you've been walking around your whole life with a big leg length difference and one of your arches is a lot lower than the other from placing more weight on one foot, or if you've had an old injury to the arch of your foot, or an Achilles injury which has caused your calf not to function well on that side, and the arch has dropped anything which has caused major asymmetry, you might want to consider going one way or the other and not using a symmetrical insole. So, let's talk about those things individually. Um, the proportions of your foot, if you've got an incredibly high, rigid, arched foot, and this is a fairly common thing where you see people with a, a really, really high arch and the foot doesn't distort much. This insole here, I would actually recommend this one fairly well. This is a SIDAS three feet slims insole. Now, slims refers to the thickness of the forefoot. This one here, the material's like 1.5 up to maybe two millimeters thick, which means that it doesn't take up a lot of vertical volume in the toe box of a, of a cycling shoe, which I quite like. The other thing about this is the high arch module. There's a small, there's a low, medium, high that you can select from. The high one is really quite significant. The arch is pretty decent on this. These are really great as well because they have an extremely deep heel cup. And this is one of the reasons I use these. If you've got a really unstable ankle and the heel has really is really loose and you've sprained that ankle hundreds of times playing basketball or something. The deep heel cup on this orthotic, which is pretty amazingly deep, is really good for stabilizing the heel. It's also really, really, really good if you're using heel wedging, which we won't delve into too much, but it's something that I use a lot to stabilize people with unstable subtalar joints. But if you've got a really loose, lax ankle, even if it's just on one foot, consider this particular orthotic. Relatively cheap, relatively inexpensive, lasts a very long time because of the, the, the molded nature of it. It's just a thermo-formed plastic, so it'll last for years and years and years. Deep heel cup, thin, low-volume forefoot. Really good orthotic. The G8, for if your arch is spectacularly high, like, like this is not doing it for you, you're, you're still seeing daylight between the arch module and your foot when you put your foot on it. How would you know that, just uh, if you're seeing daylight? You'd have to put your foot on it and see if there's a gap. So just look down. Basically stand on it. Yeah, take a, get someone to take a photo of it or just have a look down. But if there's daylight between the arch of your foot and, and the arch of this, or you're looking at your foot going, that arch is super crazy high, 
The G8, because you can modify this, what you can do with this is put on the highest level arch module that they've got, the, L, the, the 5, and then you can actually add material between the orthotic insert and the actual body of the orthotic. So I usually use three or four millimeter layers of EVA, which is just a medium density foam, strips of it in here to actually elevate the arch even more. So this is a really highly customizable insert, which is what's great about it. You can also, if you've got the funds to allow you to purchase these, you can move the insole orthotic arch module around, right? So you can fit it to the curvature of your arch by altering the position of it, which is really handy. It's got a really nice solid heel sort of plate on the back, which also is very, very adaptable in terms of heel wedging if you're going down that path. The heel cup isn't quite as deep, but aside from that, she's a pretty good piece of gear because it's highly modifiable. If you've got a very high arch, I would steer clear of insoles like the Specialized ones. They just don't go high enough, and nor do the Bont ones. They're just not high enough for people with high arches. So choose one of these two would be my advice, or a set of full custom ones if you've got the funds. It's hard to go past full custom orthotics if they're built well, um, because they, they are gonna account for a lot of that asymmetry that you may have in your foot and any, any kind of stuff that the podiatrist who's making them identifies in your foot. And obviously getting a professional to look at your foot is, is you know head and shoulders above looking at this stuff yourself and making assessments. But if you are trying to buy a cheapish set of orthotics yourself, one of these two, or potentially the, the specialized ones, which I don't mind if your arch is nice and long and low. They work quite well. So those are the positives and negatives about these. The heel cup, the thin volume forefoot, the adjustability of the G8, two or three times the price of the SIDAS insert. Between these two though, this will cover you for most sort of people. Now, if you've got a highly asymmetrical foot, go straight to the G8, right? Because if one of your arches is much longer than the other, higher or lower, a symmetrical insole is not gonna be as ideal as it could. And these are so good because you can click them on, move them around, change the height of them, and you can get them as comfortable as you, as you can if your foot is quite different. Uh, left versus right. Now, another reason you might want the G8 is if your foot is very mobile. So we spoke about a really rigid high arch foot. If you've got a foot which splays a lot, so you hit the ground and it really, the arch drops down and it's really mobile and it twists and bends really easily and you've got lots of mobility in your foot, I would actually drift towards the G8 as well. This one has the ability Suspension. Yeah, suspension in your feet, as yeah, David yeah. would say. Yeah, it's got more ability to absorb that splay. I find generally that people with really rigid feet do, do slightly better with a very rigid orthotic, and people who've got movement in their foot do better with the, something like the G8 that's got a bit of movement in it. Yeah, so if you've got a really pliable foot, I would, I would actually go for these. Um, so these are a really good all-rounder. If you're in any great doubt, the G8's probably good because it's so customizable. Um, and it, but if you're looking at this video thinking, yeah, hang on, I've got a really high arch, a really rigid foot which doesn't deform much, I'm not very flexible in general, the ligaments of my feet are very stiff, and I've had multiple ankle sprains, I'd actually consider something like the SIDAS one. Yeah. So these are, these are fairly available all over the world, um, as far as I know. I think they're made in Co South Korea somewhere, and really quite a good insole for people with that type of foot. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be my two favourites, and the one that I'm missing here would be something like the specialized insole, the, the blues in particular. If you've got a nice long low arch and there's nothing unusual about your foot, those insoles tend to work reasonably well. Yeah. How common is it for people just to get their shoe with the standard insole and then to ride off and it to be fine? So the def yeah, to define being fine is a tricky one. Okay. So for example, yesterday I had a rider who was dropping his right hip quite badly and his only symptom was cr cramping and pain across the top of his left foot, so across the dorsum of his foot on longer rides, right? Um, so uh, Glenn will be out there listening to this and uh, might put his hand up in the comments if he does. So um, this rider was basically, we, we discovered he was dropping his right hip primarily because he'd sprained his right ankle two or three times playing basketball or something so a long, long time ago. He was, I think he was nearly 70 and this had happened 30 years before, but when we were assessing him off the bike, we'd found that his rear foot was super unstable on his, on his dominant right foot. And we basically fixed his seat height, moved his cleat position slightly rearward to help him stabilize his foot, and we used a pair of these. And it just instantly just squared him up on the bike, got rid of all his asymmetry, stopped him overextending his, his, his opposite leg. And this was, so this, he didn't, he didn't have foot pain from this, right? So he, mm. 
you may not get a symptom from the orthotic in the foot, in the shoe, going, oh yeah, that's not right because I can feel pain there. You may actually get something unusual like an asymmetrical pedal stroke from a lack of arch stability. Right. So this is a difficult one to actually know whether you've got a problem from it until you actually try it. Yes. The one thing I will say categorically is that foot stabilization on the pedal is one of the like top three most fundamentally critical things for a good bike position. Seat height, cleat position, and foot stabilization would have to be the top three, right? So if your arch isn't stable, you've got a lax rear foot, your foot's pronating every time you, 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 you pedal with your dominant foot, and you're dropping your hip forward to stabilize your foot subconsciously, you might get left-sided saddle sores because of a lack of arch support, for mm. example. Yeah, so this kind of thing happens all the time. I see it four or five times a week in some form. And so this this is such, again, this is low-hanging fruit. This is stuff that's pretty cheap in the scheme of things, which can have some pretty massive tangible improvements in your comfort if you do it well. So choosing a really good quality orthotic with a deep heel cup, a nice arch module that suits the shape of your foot, and, uh, and, and and enough vertical volume in the midfoot, in the forefoot here. Uh, these are all really important things, I think. Yeah, so it can be difficult to know a lot of this, uh, this stuff about yourself. If in doubt, go and see a good podiatrist or a foot specialist and get them to choose a set that's gonna work for you. Don't go for stuff that's really floppy and wobbly in the back. The stuff you can buy from the chemist that's just got no stabilization to it, which is just a long, flat piece of squidgy foam. Aim for something with a bit of structure. Yeah, mm. structure is pretty important in a, in a cycling insole. Yeah. Cool. All right. So hopefully that'll help some of you choose uh, which one to get. And if in doubt, and if you've got endlessly deep pockets, go custom. Yep. Yeah, get some custom molded ones.